I thought what I'd do is have little story tags every once in a while. Little stories that go through different certain cases and stuff that I've done and just talk about them, uh, what was going on, what happened, uh, true cases that I worked on, stuff that I was uh, doing. Cases and the names, obviously, I'm not going to mention too much about, uh, but I will talk about all the details of the cases. This one was in 1972. Uh, and the, the title of the case was The Red Brick House in the Window. That's the title of the case. So, <clears throat> it all started with the, the council getting these calls from two or three different families. But the first couple of times, for some reason, when these families called, I don't know. I don't know what the what was done or what wasn't done, um, but for some reason, the council didn't feel the need uh, to to do anything about what they said to the people was to you know try to get some proof and blah 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 that old spiel. But the people. The people that lived there would only stay for two or three months at a time. So there really was, I think, and that might be, that might be part of it. Um, the thing with this place, it was built. And then one couple lived there for about four or five years. Uh, and then tragedy happened. And then after that, after they cleaned up everything and everything else, they started to rent up the, uh, the the place. And every two or three months, someone was in and out, in and out, in and out. And this went on for, for some time. Until it came across the desk. <coughs> but anyway, <clears throat> some of the things that happened was... Uh, the first thing that really stood out was... Uh, kept being told that there is this guy's face and it keeps showing up in the picture window, right? That in itself isn't that, you know, like it could be anybody. It could be, uh, you know, someone being a peeking Tom. It could be anything, right? But they said, no, it's, it's, it's like on the glass. Uh, that's okay. Well, that's interesting. What really piqued my interest, in, though, was the picture window they're talking about is on the second story. At, it's thirty feet to the freaking ground. There's no <laughs> nobody's that tall, right? So his face kept appearing in this picture window on the second story of this building. Okay. But that was the one one thing that, that always kept happening in the place. The other thing was every year or so, they'd have to replace the window because it would shatter. Um, they'd hear a lot of screaming, a lot of like people were fighting in the house. And then this window would shatter, it would explode. And then they'd have to replace the bloody window. And they replaced the window three or four times. But the face kept appearing in the window. It kept coming back. So even though they were new windows, the same face came back in three different windows. Other things that happened in the house was lights would flicker on and off, obviously, things like that. Cupboard doors would open and shut. Um, one thing that happened, <clears throat> which was another strange thing, and it happened every three or, okay, nightmare. It happened every three or four months. They had a fireplace, just a small fireplace in the living room up there. Well, the people would go to bed and they'd wake up in the morning and in the middle of the living room floor, the ashes would be piled up like, um, like a triangle with three sides, you know, like a pyramid almost. 
and it was packed tight. Like it was, and then yet the uh, fireplace itself was clean as a whistle. You could lick off it, eat your eat your breakfast off it. Um, it was clean. It was oiled. It was like somebody had spent a couple of hours removing the ashes, and then and they wiped out the fireplace and they oiled it. You know, to preserve the uh, the fireplace. It was like a spring cleaning of the fireplace, and this would happen. It would happen every once in a while. Uh, other things that would happen is they'd feel like there was always someone in the house. They'd feel that there was always a presence there. Um, most of the time, the present wasn't wasn't nervy. But when these weird things would happen, you know, they'd get scared. Obviously, the cupboards in the kitchens and everything else would would open and slam open and slam uh one morning they got up and all the chairs were all stacked up um there was uh oh yeah uh one one time there was uh four butcher knives stuck into the table uh where each person the husband the wife and the two kids where their dinner place would be there was knives stuck in the in the table that's that was one of the things that that really started to turn that's when it kind of started to turn a little bit ugly um but lots of other different things like when you go up and down the stairs there'd be someone following you you'd hear the, the stairs in the middle of the night you'd hear people walking around uh every once in a while you'd hear arguments uh, people fighting inside the house when the kids were asleep and the parents were in bed uh, They'd hear this fighting and so of course the first the first couple of three times The guy got up with a baseball bat and went to check who broke into the house Nobody in the house he turned and that's when he first saw after that first big fight saw the face staring at him through the window uh, Well this particular couple anyway uh, saw the face staring him at the window, which basically he said, I, I, I pissed my pants, you know, literally pissed myself because uh, it, it was illuminated. It was, uh, it had a, um, like you could see the details of it. You could see the, uh, uh, everything about it, you know, and uh, he said, that, you know, that, that was something else. So, after that and, and the first meeting and, and talking to them and talking to the neighbors and everything else and the neighbors would say yeah every once in a while you hear yelling and screaming for some reason the window breaks and and you know name na the neighbors uh confirmed uh a lot of the stuff that was going on already so we decided well okay so some research went on and it turns out <clears throat> that the original couple hey car original couple that lived there came home one day the wife was really pissed off so was the husband she ran up the stairs first and then he come flying up the stairs after which could be residual right like you, you hear the two steps coming up to two people coming up and then apparently there was a big fight they were all arguing and everything else well <clears throat> At that point, the guy, he, he hit his wife. He, he gave her a backhand, and his wife went out the picture window. She hit the dirt. She hit the ground. But when she hit the ground, she landed head first, and she snapped her neck and died instantly. Um, he stood at the window. He was looking down at her. He shook his head. He went into the... He went into his closet, got a shotgun. Here's where it gets interesting. He got, he got his shotgun, pulled the screen off the fireplace, stuck his head, his body in there, put his head like this, and he shot himself in the head while his head, while he was lying with his head in the fireplace. So <clears throat> basically he blew his head off inside the fireplace. The only, the only, the, the thing that struck 
uh, the people, I guess, was who they left the house to. He left a note for whoever the house was going to go to next, willed to or whatever. Uh, sorry about the window. Didn't want to mess up the rest of the house. Right? Didn't say anything about killing his wife. Didn't say nothing about killing himself. Uh, hey, Peppers. Didn't say anything about that. Uh, all that the note said was, I'm sorry about the window and I didn't want to mess up the rest of the house. So he stuck his, he, he got himself so that his head was inside the fireplace and he blew his brains out with his head inside the fireplace so everything would be contained in the fireplace. So he didn't mess up the rest of the house. That was his only uh, concern on the note was the mess that he left behind. <clears throat> so obviously there was lots of um lots to do there i mean uh cleansing the place and, and talking to the spirits and back then we had we had different tools that that you know nowadays you don't got these things but back then i had a great big reel to reel machine uh, weighed about 50 pounds, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we'd, we'd sit there and just like you do now, uh, we'd ask questions and see if we get answers or anything like that. Um, two of the things I got was, uh, well, there was a couple of weird things. But when I asked the questions, um, one of them... I asked was, why did you kill your wife, right? Obvious question. And the EVP said, uh, did not mean to. And then I said, um, but of course I still didn't hear this at this time. So I said, what caused you to do this, you know? And the got an EVP, well, on the electrical tape, uh, that said I lost my temper. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't much, um, <clears throat> that, oh yeah, it was, um, are you stuck here? Yes. Is she stuck here? Yes. Um, and then that, that was that. So then we left it running and we all exited the place for a little while. <clears throat> when we came back in, shut it all off, and we said, well, we'll be back to do some more, but we're just trying to understand what's going on so that we can solve the situation, right? Can't do it if we don't know exactly what's what. Um, so we went, we found those two things on the tape, but also on the tape, when there was nobody there, you could hear a lady crying. And she said, sorry, sorry, a couple of times. And then, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 minutes later on the tape, you could hear a guy sobbing. He says, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Right? So at that point, we thought, well, you know what? I think the major issue here is they're not hearing each other or something. They're not understanding each other. Maybe we can approach it from that angle to see um, if there's any way we can help resolve this stuff. So then we got out the white noise and the brown noise. And it's not like, not like the radio, okay? It's just, uh, it's just um, the noise itself recorded onto the tape, right? So, we put the one tape machine on, but it just had the noise. We put another tape machine on beside that one. Now, the one that we were using for the white noise was the real reel. Uh, we used white noise, yellow noise, brown noise. We used all the different spectrums. Um, but we had a cassette type recorder. It wasn't really cassette, but it was something like a cassette recorder. Anyway, uh, we'd hit record with that one, right? And then we'd ask questions with the white noise on. 
And the thing with white noise is, uh, with pure noise, you will hear a lot of footsteps in it. You'll hear bangings in it. You'll hear all kinds. But depending on on the energy, you have to have the right noise in order to hear words. Like a lot of times, yellow noise, you'll be able to hear a word or two. White noise, sometimes you'll hear a word or two. <coughs> Red and brown, you never hear words, but you hear footsteps. You hear banging noises you hear tapping you can hear all that kind of stuff but on yellow noise you don't hear any of that but you can hear words every once in a while but anyway so we were trying the, the different ones leastwise that's my experience with the white noise and, and all that <clears throat> I'm not saying it's impossible i'm just saying in my experience i've never heard voices on the darker range but you hear all the noises in the house on the darker range uh, the lighter the color, with the absence of color white, but with the lighter colors, pink and white uh, and yellow, you can hear voices. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, so we had this noise going on and we were asking questions, trying to figure out, you know, so basically they both said, that they're holding each other there because they feel guilty. They both felt guilty. Uh, she felt guilty for causing the fight in the first place and what she did before the fight. <clears throat> so we turned around and asked her, well, what the hell did you do to deserve getting, you know, slapped? Eh? Like, let alone flying out the window and all that shit, right? Like, for a guy to slap you, what the hell did you do? Turns out she slept with his brother according to the EPP we got, she said slept with, and I think his name was Jonathan or something. It's not really important, but slept with, with so-and-so. Um, <clears throat> so I guess they got in a fight. They came home. She was yelling. He was yelling. He got mad. He gave her a backhand, but he hit her way too freaking hard. She went flying out the window and died. So so they both had a lot of resentment, a lot of guilt, a lot of um, anger, a lot of this stuff penned up. So the following day after that, we, we went back and we did a house blessing and we used a holy oil, holy water. Uh, <coughs> we saged the house. And then I did a water blessing pouring and prayers with water with the water blessing. And then I got Astro and Shakara to talk to them to find out if they could forgive all this other stuff and and everything else. So that went okay. So then I poured for forgiveness to the wife. And I poured for forgiveness to the husband. And then I poured for forgiveness from Jesus. And I poured for forgiveness from Mother Earth and all that. I did the whole ceremony. <coughs> well, coolest thing, the, the house owners are there, the people that live there, not the kids, obviously, but the, the, the adults are there. Coolest thing ever, when I said, all is forgiven, you forgive each other, no more resentments, no more hatred. You forgive each other. You, disembodied voice at the same time. One male, one female said one word, yes. Right? Soon as they said yes, the old, this is back a long time, they had these chandeliers with these little plastic jewels. As soon as they said yes, that chandelier went and then it was dead quiet. And it just felt like they left. It felt like um, the air just smelled clean. It, 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 everything just seemed so much more open. Uh, there was more light in the house. And the woman 
and the man that lived there both started bawling completely, which <clears throat> at that time we knew is they were feeling the emotions of the people that, that uh, this all happened to in the first place. And they were both crying and they both said, I love you, I love you. They both said, I forgive you, I forgive you. And then poof, everything was quiet, right? So that that day we, we stayed there and we, we did a few more tests and a few more EVPs and a few more this and that. Got bunkus, there was nothing. Uh, no noises, no anything. So I said, okay, well, I think, I think we're good. So we did a, a final prayer and we left. <clears throat> then I told them, I said, call this number. Uh, let me know how it goes in a couple of days, whatever. Uh, so I said, okay, yeah. So they said, okay, they did give me a call. So they called three days later and they said, we want to thank you. The house has been very quiet. It feels like home. And the kids for two nights now have slept in their own beds and have not crawled into bed with us. So for two nights in a row, the kids slept in their own room. I said, fantastic, you know. Um, that made me cry because uh, that's why that's why I started it in the first place was to help out <coughs> help out kids and, and family because no one should have to live like that. No one should have to be afraid in their own in their own house. Yeah, that's uh, that's Fred the Fly. He's a pain in my ass, but I can't kill him. I don't know why. I, I like the little bugger, but he's he's a pain in my ass. <coughs> That was the that was the end of the case. Um, well, we did check up on them. I think it was three or four months later, and they said everything was still perfect. Um, they actually ended up buying the whole house a few years later. So there was never any more reports at that address. There was never any more... Uh, there was never nothing there after that. It was just always uh, a nice, warm feeling home from all the reports that I got after that. All right, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Watch out for ghosts. <laughs> and have a good night. We will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.